What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jerry Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, more set photos, and there's some more photos that just keep coming out on a, on a day-to-day basis, Brian. I think if we put this together in, like, newspaper clippings like Batman, he could probably tell you what this movie will be before it comes out. That's how good he is. Hopefully that's how good we are, Brian. Let's see. And also, we want to also discuss, uh, which I found rather interesting, Brian. And there was a specific line in that article that you sent me, Brian, about this, the, the axing of the Arkham series, Brian. So let's get into that as well. So Superman set photos, Brian. What, what's the latest? Well, a couple of things. And James Gunn finally weighed in. I think that's the biggest new thing is I think people went at him and were kind of like, yo, what's up with, with all these things and like you know the reality is if you're going to shoot practically and you're going to shoot somewhere in the city people are going to notice when there's there's a big operation and dudes in costumes and you know so but i think a couple of things stood out to me one is we we started it felt like in the early shootings we were getting kind of some of the starting to get some of the extended universe right the mr terrific uh we got to look at the engineer we think we got to look at ultraman now we got to look at i think it was hot girl played by Isabel Merced and the Green Lantern that Nathan Fillion is playing popped up in the set photos. So you're kind of getting all these peripheral characters. But Gunn said something that also I thought was significant because when he was asked about the set photos giving away too much, his response was, quote, we knew this was going to happen. I'm not dumb enough to shoot a major spoiler in the center of an actual city, end quote. So that would kind of suggest to me that everything you've seen is almost like a little bit of fan service. It's almost like, yeah, I'll let you get a taste of this universe. And I'll, you know, I got to use their comics accurate costumes for the most part, but none of what, very little of what you're seeing is all that impactful to the main thrust of the story I intend to tell. That's how I read his statement, that he's very comfortable with everyone snapping stuff on their phones because nothing that he wants to hold close to his chest is in view. Like I said before, Brian, I'm just going to wait to see the movie that he wants us to see. That's it. I mean, certainly we can sort of speculate on what possible storylines, and we already talked about that on our previous show, Brian. But outside of that, it's all speculative. And And if it comes to be close to what, People are saying the possible theories and stuff like that. I mean, some of the things that you 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 mentioned last time regarding Bizarro and, and Ultraman and stuff, I can see that being the case. And Lex Luthor running for... I can see all of that. Mm-hmm. So let's see what else he has, Brian, because if it is nothing more than we, what we already speculated to be, then he really didn't possibly do a good job in hiding the the what the the movie's all about. But we just gotta wait and see. But I think he's drawing a contrast to say, for example, leaked photos of you know Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds fighting on the beach. Like that scene, we know is going to be pretty impactful. Yeah, you know, that's based upon the trailer. That's probably early in their relationship in Deadpool and Wolverine, and like that scene got out there. So he's kind of I don't know if he's directing the comment at something like that specifically, but I think he's suggesting that. He's at least he's enough. He's wise enough to have incorporated this idea into how he laid out his shoot schedule. And so yeah. when he says like when he says they're more than halfway done, and you look at kind of like what we've seen, it gives me a little bit of optimism that like the really good stuff is is in the bag and might be shot on a soundstage or a studio, and and uh, you know we won't necessarily see it in plain sight. I did see one photo which I personally was very excited to see, and I think you might have. I don't know if you saw it as well. There is a photo what appears to be during some kind of set piece or some kind of action that's going on of Superman saving a cat, which is obviously- Was it a, a cat direct... or a dog? Was it a dog? It's a pet. I... It's a small pet. I thought it was a cat, but it was just... maybe I'm mixing it up with the actual inspiration, which is obviously yeah. the scene yeah. in yeah. Superman the movie where he saves the cat um, for the child out of the tree, which is you know one of the very sort of quintessential Superman moments. So I, I actually was very excited to see that yeah i mean i think james gunn is looking to hit all those notes and 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 i guess those moments of nostalgia from the original but hopefully he doesn't overdo it 
Your thoughts, Brian, really on, on, on Christopher Reeve's kid, son? Yeah, no, I mean, it was it, it was confirmed that so Christopher Reeve's son, who who doesn't look exactly like him, but you definitely see some of the resemblance, is going to be, you know, playing a, a small cameo role. And, and I guess he's going to speak in the movie. And I look, I mean, I think that's a great tribute to the family. I think to your point, though, I think Gunn is smart enough to avoid the trap that Brian Singer fell into, which is you want to echo the Donner movie, you don't want to worship it. Yeah, because yeah, if yeah. you if you literally try to recreate it, people will detect that and you will constrain your own storytelling, which was a big, I think, big part of why Superman Returns didn't get to where it should have gotten to, is they mm. were slaves to yes. Superman the movie and Superman 2 uh, in, yeah. in particular. So I, I think Gunn is smart enough to avoid that, but yeah, he's clearly putting in a few nods to the original um, and, and is trying to clearly get back to his his view. I call it his viewpoint mm -hmm. of sort of you know, well, not just Donner Superman, but classic comic Superman. I think those are mm -hmm. you know we view them kind of as similar, but they're not totally one of them the same either. I'm guessing they're gonna make him say some lines that is referring to Christopher Reeve. That'll be dope. Though. Let's see how they do it. Let's see how they do it. <laughs> Brian, anything else for Superman? No no other than i i think people are sleeping on a trailer possibility i really do for I mean, I know I'm, for superman i think people i think i'm on an island on this but i really think it's i know but a trailer for odds. superman when a trailer for superman this when? summer okay this you summer. think people are just not thinking about it i think people are sleeping on it and gun is deliberately not talking about it which is wise in my opinion, based upon his his actual comments, they have enough footage that if he wanted to do it, he could yes. do it. And I just think that with so much riding on this project, I think you want to start early. 2025 is a very busy year, totally unrelated, but just this morning, uh, Apple released a ridiculously cool looking teaser for their Formula One movie, which is directed by Joe Kosinski, who did Top Gun Maverick and stars Brad Pitt. And, and if you guys haven't yes. seen it, like when you mm -hmm. see the teaser, you're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna go to IMAX. I know nothing, even if you don't like auto racing, you're like, that looks super cool. So it's a jam packed calendar. And I think this movie has to work, as we've said. I don't think they can afford to wait till, say, like the Super Bowl to start promoting yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think. You know, whether it's Comic-Con or whether it's something, I think there is a chance you see a teaser for James Gunn's Superman before the summer is over. The fans have been waiting to see what you have to offer in terms of what interpretation of Superman you want to give us because we saw an interpretation that it was polarizing and people seem to have size as to which Superman they like best, right? If Marvel's going to be there to show off something, I think he should too. I think there's a debate over if he did something do you do it in hall h as, as a sizzle reel that does not make it to the public eye or do they actually release the teaser like they show it and then they put it online and everyone can see it i think they'll do the latter because they need the audience to be huge i don't think they can rely on word of mouth go find the shaky bootleg and we'll try to delete them all. Like, I really don't think they can rely on that. I think Zaslav's going to be breathing down his neck, and I really think they need to get something out. Now, the one hole in my theory would be their own calendar. There is not the obvious gigantic Warner Brothers release in the summer anymore for them to attach this to. Furiosa like, wasn't big enough and it was too early. They're technically the studio on Horizon, but they didn't really produce it. So the things that are biggest obviously come in the fall. So there's mm -hmm. Joker, Folly Ado. I would say no later than that, we get it. That would be the latest, that'd be October. Dark Horse would be, they put it out in September around the time when they're putting out the Christopher Reeve story. That documentary that they, that the fan is working <laughs> on, that's coming. That's my Dark Horse for like, if it hasn't happened in the summer, it comes like right around that, even though it's not a big screen release. And okay. mid-September. So that, that'd be the latest, but I just think people are sleeping on how early this could come. Interesting dilemma to have, Brian. Regardless of which way <clears throat> they go. I mean, you want a ballsy move. You should pay to get it in front of Deadpool and Wolverine.
So you yeah. can't pay the studio, obviously, if you pay the theaters. You say, run this trailer attached to that movie because we know the audience is basically the same and it's going to be a huge launch. And we yeah, go, that's, that, 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 we're, com- that, we're coming head to head next year. That's like, the move. That's the move. That's the move. And that's right, after, that. that's yes. right after Comic-Con. Yes, that's the move right there. That's what I would do because everybody's going to be there to watch. <laughs> there's your audience. Yeah. There's your audience. There's your... There's your, if you impress and can give us that feeling, Brian, if you impress Brian with a 20 second, whatever t- long trailer you have, and you impress with the, not to borrow what The Rock says, but the millions <laughs> and millions of people that are going to be watching, you know what I'm saying? There's your platform. Yeah. I mean, if you want to compete weekends too. in a row. Well, I'm just saying also, if you want to compete, that's a movie, that's a very buzzy event movie. If you can somehow put, 60 or 90 seconds in front of it to where people walk out of that movie and they're actually talking more about that than the movie they saw that's 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 some competitive stuff right there if you can pull it off james gunn there you go the one we're we're still waiting for the contracts we're we're still waiting (laughs) brian max there have been this talk before about a Gotham series, a Gotham PD series, Brian. But I think as the longer they spoke about it, although I would have been interested, and I perhaps see the reason why they didn't go that route because we already had a Gotham series, Brian, and they, and they didn't want to risk that confusion. Uh, and they switched over to this Arkham series, which we didn't know quite, uh, we didn't understand quite really what the show would be about we all, all we all we were speculating there was a, mostly a lot of speculation as to what this show would be about it was perhaps there was one that i thought was interesting regarding uh an anthology series for all the villains uh of arkham or the inmates right and, and each episode mm-hmm. would focus on one of them i don't know so it seems like that project brian has been scrapped and there was mm-hmm. a line in that article brian that you sent me that it seems that James Gunn, James Gunn wants that series for his world, Brian, which I believe is the beginning of the, the erasing of any Elseworld stuff. Go ahead. Well, let me read the quote and then let's get into it. So, or actually, it's kind of the article. It's not Gunn himself. So let's be clear. He doesn't say this in social, but it is reference to something he has said before generally. Quote, last year, DC Studios chief James Gunn suggested the series, meaning this Arkham series, would be set within the new DCU rather than the Elseworlds universe of Reeves' Batman. Now, that is significant because it is a Matt Reeves-produced series. So that would imply that Reeves, even though he would not be the showrunner, he would not be the director, it was his idea that they would be co-opting into James Gunn's world even as... Robert Pattinson's Batman, which Reeves is directing, stays separate. So this thing, as you said, went through a couple iterations. Originally was supposed to be a Gotham PD, presumably Jeffrey Wright centric show. Then it morphed, according to Reeves at the time, into an Arkham Asylum centric show. Once I think the Batman had come out and sort of that we would have been introduced to somewhat to to Arkham. There've been several showrunners. There were actually three different showrunners along the way. And now the project has been scrapped entirely. It also is framed specifically, again, as we got into this distinction, a Max series. This was apparently never considered as an HBO project, which we know Lanterns has graduated. I think that's the right word, has graduated to the network. Whereas Mm -hmm. the Penguin, I think the Penguin would have been on HBO. And I would bet you that season two of the Penguin will be on HBO Mm -hmm. if there is a season two. Mm -hmm. But it, it was coming out too soon. So they left it as a Max show. But there is a difference there. So... It, the article does leave open the door that a show of some type could be resurrected. I assume that's what you're referring to, that James Gunn may sort of just take the keys on this and mm-hmm. kind of resurrect his own Batman-ish yes. or Batman universe show once maybe Brave and the Bull gets going. And I guess, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about if that's the if that's sort of the power? I don't know if it's a power struggle, but if that's the power transfer. How do you no, feel about it? The thing is, obviously, Brian, to me anyway, you don't want competing IP. You just don't want it, right? Especially if you're establishing this world. Especially, imagine that would have been the case with the MCU at the beginning. The MCU was all about connectivity. Mm -hmm. And you saw what happened there. 
Listen, there there are those who don't mind the Elseworlds, and I don't mind. I don't mind them either. I just let it be its own thing, right? Like like really, if you're gonna do something for me, an Elseworld would be let's do the Return of the Dark Knight uh, movie live action. Let's do let's do that. Not take pieces. Do the whole thing live action. That's to me is an elsewhere thing, but I don't think they're gonna they they they're gonna do that or they want to do that, right? Because you again, you don't want competing IP now. My comment about James Gunn erasing the Elseworld thing, I think Brian, again, he doesn't want people talking about two the same thing and, and it'd be two different things. It just doesn't make sense business wise, especially if he's trying to do something spectacular, which I think he will if we get that announcement that Alan Rich is Batman. Timothy Talamay as Damian Rob. Wayne. <laughs> yes. There's um, no way around it. Where I'm with you on this is I kind of think Elseworlds is a euphemism for Reeves and Phillips. And what I mean by that is you obviously are not going to shelve projects that made the kind of bank that exactly. Batman and Joker 1 did. Exactly. But until we see an announcement of a truly new Elseworlds film, yeah, I kind of feel like this is more, we're letting these guys finish Do playing their in their sandbox, but the door is not really open for a whole bunch new of new stuff. That, nope. that to me would be the test, right? It's like, and if so, I bet you that bar is uber high. Like I remember like a long time ago, I think like Steven Spielberg wanted to do something around Black Hawk and World War II. And like, so if he comes to you and says, I got this idea in my twilight years, I want to do a Black Hawk movie. They're going to say yes, because it's Steven Spielberg, right? Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. the kind of bar. Yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah. think they're setting up like eight projects, you know, with known characters. I, even if it is Batman, I, I think it would be very careful. I think they'd be yeah. apt to almost let that sit. So yeah, I think Elseworlds is really just Figure Joker is probably what a trilogy. That would be my guess. I mean, that's probably what Phillips would do. Three movies. Okay, so you got yeah, one coming this fall, one more after that. Reeves obviously has said it's a trilogy. He has an end point he wants to get to. I think that's it. I think it's basically once Folly Ado hits, it's those three films. And then color me skeptical that we actually get any more Elseworlds for a long time, even if DC oh, yeah. is successful with, with sort of the the gun saffron productions we'll probably get it when sasloff sells <laughs> what's what i mean we may not even get there but i'm just saying yeah. like yeah i you know i think, to you, I, I think I, even if someone came and said like i'm you know if you had like a an indie filmmaker that shows up and it's like i have a great idea to do return of the dark knight i, I think it would be tough I, I think getting those dollars and getting that commitment is going to be tough i think they're going to be reluctant ryan if i would have been at the table and everybody sort of deciding Hey, okay, we can't do this. Oh, we won't. We don't want to do this Gotham anymore because of all this other stuff or whatever. And I and, and either you or I say, how about if we na rename the show the Commissioner of Batman series? <laughs> I would have loved to see Jeffrey Wright in this state of mind of having to deal with this vigilante and deal with all the problems that Gotham got and have a family. That's to me is interesting. That's a show. Well, Listen, I, on the yeah, Go no, ahead. just quickly, I, I don't disagree with you. And in fact, I'll take it one step further. If you wanted to, depending on when you wanted to put this in the timeline, I mean, Batman Law and Order is just sitting there because you've got Gordon in the streets. You could put Harvey Dent in the in the courtroom. That's it. Yeah. Like, what, what do I need to change? Like, I don't, I just, I just set it in the Batman universe and I can do a procedural. Like, but what else? It's not you that do hard. Something but that's the thing that you do so, you do something fantastic then the people the people's expectation is to see more of that and and what what else would whatever ha is happening with the other stuff right i don't yeah. know if people are able to differentiate and still enjoy both too without having some sort of discomfort of, or understanding of what's going on i don't know warner brothers and maybe this will want to be a good thing warner brothers seems to be very judicious about how much batman content they're putting out <laughs> Right, like so, Cape Crusader they hand it off to Amazon, as we've talked about many times. They're very content to wait for Matt Reeves to take his time, and he likes taking his time on the Batman trilogy. We're getting the Penguin, so that's sort of a spinoff there. But they've canceled Batgirl. 
They've canceled this show. They let Cape Crusader get out the door. Like there are definitely studios. I think that would have, would have said like, well, Batman's our guy and we're just going to flood you with Batman content. Yeah. And WB has kind of actively gone the other way and they've axed Batman content, which we'll see if that winds up being the right decision. But rarely, I feel like, do we see a, a less is more approach with a character that is so reliable at making money. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's on the comment section below. What you guys think of all this? Is it just better to wait to see what uh, movie James Gunn has to show us? And hopefully he delivers some sort of excitement this summer, man. Because we just can't be started to get excited like three months before the movie comes out. No, 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 no. You got to give us something. And I think he knows that. And he's playing it chill. And this Arkham series being done and over with, is this the beginning of again? I think the the the... Uh, erasing, thinking about Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie, The Eraser, of this Elseworld situation. Like Brian said, they letting these dudes play because they made a lot of money. There's, they're earners. They're earners. And you can't get rid of your earners until they falter. I think James Gunn is playing it easy. You know, he's taking it easy and just letting things happen. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Energy Report. The show goes on! Yeah!